What's up guys, Matt Day here, and today I'm gonna to be answering one of the most common questions I get about film photography, and that's what camera should I start with? I get asked that question almost every single week by somebody that sends in an email, and over the last couple of years, I've actually been asked by probably five or six friends of mine, you know, that uh, they wanna get started in photography and they'd like to shoot film, but they don't know where to start, you know, they don't have any cameras, and every single time I recommend the Pentax K1000. And I'm not the only person who, you know, recommends this camera. It's sort of, you know, widely known as the perfect beginner camera. But because I get that question so often, I thought it would be a good opportunity for me to just sit down and, you know, talk about this camera and why I recommend it so much. So that way, anytime people want to know, I can just direct them to this video. Um, because like I said, I answer this question probably at least once or twice a week. And uh, it's pretty much, it's recommended to be the perfect beginner camera for a lot of different reasons, and we'll get into that. But uh, back in the day, this started production of this camera in 1976, I believe. It was sometime in the 70s. And uh, for a long time, it was pretty much widely known as the high school camera for photography classes or even college classes. Um, just because they're, you know, really, uh, really simple to use. They're really reliable cameras and uh, they're, they're great. They're just good, solid workhorses for anybody who's getting into it or even just people who have been shooting for years. Um, my friend Josh Richter, this is actually his camera and uh, I recommended him to pick up the K1000 whenever he wanted to get into photography and he's been using it ever since then. And I mean, he's done amazing work with this thing. So I asked him to let me borrow the camera just so um, you know I could make a video on it because I actually started with my Minolta XGM and I feel like if I started with this camera, I probably would have at least gotten the hang of exposure a lot quicker just because of the way the metering is set up and so on. But um, yeah, I figured we would take a look at this camera today. I'd kind of talk about the features and uh, yeah, hopefully some of you guys out there that are looking for a camera to start with you'll be able to pick up a K1000. All right, so we're gonna take a closer look at the camera here, and right off the bat, just from taking a quick glance at the camera, you can see it's a really minimalist kind of camera. Uh, not a whole lot going on, not many features at all, really. Uh, but that's what I love about the camera. I love how simplistic it is, and uh, really, really easy to use. Very uh, back to the basics, you know. It's nice whenever you go from shooting with something that has a lot of different features, and then you go back to this, where you're really only controlling your shutter speed and aperture, and that's it. So really enjoyable camera to use. But other than that, uh, you've got your shutter speed dial right up here, which ranges from one one thousandth of a second to one second or bulb if you want to do long exposures. And speaking of which, the uh, shutter release right here, it is threaded so that way you can use a cable release for a long exposure, which is really convenient. Um, inside your shutter speed dial, you can lift this up and then turn it and that's going to adjust your film speed. So whatever your film speed is, or if you're pushing or pulling your film, you can you know, adjust that, and that's gonna control your light meter inside the viewfinder. Um, inside your film advance right here, you have your uh, film counter. So as you adjust the film or advance the film, your little frame counter right here will change, and it just has numbers inside the little window to let you know what frame you're on. Um, up here, you have your uh, film rewind, but before you do that, you'll press this button here on the bottom, and that will basically just unlock your film whenever it's uh, being wound up on this spool over here. So that way, whenever you go to rewind your film, you're not going to rip it out. Um, there we go. So after you press that button, you just wind it up just like any other 35 millimeter SLR really, and then lift up and it pops open the back. And that's where you load your film or take your film out whenever you're done. And I'll load a roll of film here, here in a minute, but you know, just so you know, that's how that goes. And on the bottom, you have your tripod mount as well as your battery compartment. Now, one thing to keep in mind about the battery is this camera is completely mechanical. So if your battery dies, you're not gonna be without a camera that's functioning. You're just not gonna have a light meter in your viewfinder, which really isn't a big deal if you're used to shooting, uh, you know, with a certain film or a certain speed. Uh, you're going to know your exposures, you know, after a while this stuff just kind of sticks in your mind and even if you don't really know exactly, you can always kind of work with something like the Sunny 16 rule and just go from there. So that's a plus in my opinion, you know, is if you don't have a battery, if your battery dies, you can still shoot with this camera. And the batteries in this thing, uh, it's just one little small uh, cell battery that, you know, those things seem to last forever. I. Uh, had one in my Minolta XGM for probably a few years before I ever had to uh, change the battery. So nice thing about it is those things do last a long time, even if they are kind of harder to find. Um, as far as your uh, lens right here, you have your lens mount and you just lift, 
pull, basically pull back on this little lever right here on the side and to uh, take your lens on and off. And you've got your uh, mirror that you can see in there since this is an SLR. And uh, yeah, really, really simple. Mount your lens back, clicks into place, and there you go. Um, up here on the top, you do have a hot shoe, but also on the side, you have this little X sink port. So that way, if you want to, uh, you know, just run a PC sync cord or something to, uh, to the camera without actually mounting your flash on top, you can do that as well. So yeah, really, really simple camera. Uh, not a whole lot to talk about. I mean, that pretty much covers the entire details of the entire camera. So um, yeah, really simple stuff, but we'll go ahead and uh, load up a roll of film. That way you guys can see exactly how it works. All right, so I have a roll of HP5 in here that I've bulk loaded myself, and uh, that's what I'm gonna be shooting in here. And I'm gonna be pushing it to 1600. So before I do anything, I'm going to lift up on the shutter speed dial so that way I can turn this to 1600 right there. So that way I know that whenever I'm metering in there, it's gonna be metering properly. Now I'm gonna try and load this film backwards so that way you guys can kinda get a better view. So just, uh, you know, work with me here. <laughs> this might be kinda difficult. Uh, before I do this though, I am gonna fire the shutter a couple times just so you guys can hear it. I love the sound of this camera. Has a nice mechanical sound to it obviously, but each camera has a different sounding shutter. If you guys have watched my videos, you know I uh, love the sound of different shutters. So, all right, so we'll load this right here. You'll wanna lift this tab up a little bit because you can see it releases those prongs and that's what's gonna hold this into place. So, we'll lock that down. And then you'll take this over and you'll basically just wanna tuck this little uh, film leader into this little slit in this spool. And hopefully, kind of hold this down a little bit. And so that's still engaged. There we go. So that's good to go. It's uh, wrapped around in there and you can see that these little teeth right here are lining up with the sprocket holes and that's really important to make sure you do that. And then from there, you uh, can go ahead and close it release your shutter and then you'll want to give it just a, a couple of advances because all that film that was pulled across the back there that's what's behind the shutter but that's already been exposed to this light already so if you want to uh, take a close look at the uh, film counter right there you can see it's still uh, two, two, basically two places right behind zero so I will advance it and release it and then I'll advance it again and you can see as I'm doing this the uh, the little knob over here is spinning and that's just going to let me know that the film is advancing because it is moving this spool. And then we'll start right there and now we're on frame one. So this is where we would actually start with the camera and uh, yeah we're ready to go ahead and go out and shoot. Alright so I'm here in my backyard and before I get started shooting I want to talk to you guys about the light meter inside this camera because this is what I think makes this camera great for beginners. Uh, whenever I first got started I was using a Minolta XGM and the light meter inside of that thing wasn't very simple uh, especially for a beginner because as I'm metering in here and I'm looking through the viewfinder and I'm adjusting my aperture there was an LED readout on the inside of the viewfinder and that would basically light up by the shutter speed I needed for the correct exposure. So I would be metering in here and then I would change my aperture and then I would have to come down here and adjust the shutter speed and it was just all this back and forth. Whereas with this camera, it's really, really simple because you don't have to worry about what it is you're shooting at. You can just focus on getting the light meter correct. And the way this works is it has a needle inside the viewfinder with a positive sign and a negative sign on the inside of the viewfinder. So as you're looking through there and you're adjusting your settings, this needle will go up or down depending on what kind of light you're working with. So if your needle is pointed up at the positive, you're gonna be overexposed. And if it's pointing down, you're gonna be underexposed. And what you wanna do is make sure you get it right there in the level in the middle. And there's a little gap that kinda of lets you know when the meter is within that range, you're gonna be around the correct exposure. And to me, I think this is perfect because when people are starting out, they're not really understanding what all of these aperture numbers are or the shutter speed is. Uh, you know, they're not worried about that. They just wanna take photos. And anytime I recommend this camera to people, I say, you know, just get started and make sure you get that needle in the middle, make sure you're in focus and don't worry about the rest of it, you know? You can learn the aperture and the shutter speeds later, 
just try and get comfortable getting photos because that's what you want to do. You want to go out and shoot. You don't want to understand, you know, how aperture works when you're first getting started because it's overwhelming. Um, at least it was to me, you know. So uh, that's what I always tell people. I say just work with that needle, get it in the middle. Uh, if you're shooting anything candid or you're not on a tripod, try to keep your shutter speed at 60 or higher, you know, just so that way they're not, you know, shooting at one eighth and wondering why they're uh, getting blurry photos. Uh, so yeah. Just really simple stuff. It's a really uh, easy to use light meter and that's why I always recommend it to people because whenever you're getting started, all the other stuff is so overwhelming that this makes it really easy. Uh, you know, you're looking through the viewfinder and you're not seeing all these numbers and lights and everything. So uh, that's one of my favorite things about this camera, especially for a beginner. So I just wanted to talk to you guys about that, but um, I've got my HP5 loaded up. I'm gonna shoot some photos and then we'll uh, wrap things up. <laughs> I think the shutter's making her jump a little bit. Hey, Nora. So there you guys have it. There's the review of the Pentax K1000. And uh, like I've mentioned, it's a great camera to start with. Um, even if you're not starting, it's an awesome camera to have. Um, oftentimes I've wanted to pick one of these up just to have in my collection because it is an enjoyable camera to use. Very simple, uh, feels great in the hands and everything. And uh, these lenses are great as well. And you can find them for ridiculously cheap. So if you guys have any questions on the Pentax K1000, please leave those below in the comments. And if you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, we've got a lot more stuff coming up with uh, different film processes and so on. So make sure you're subscribed to stay ahead of that. And uh, that's it for today. So I wanna thank you guys for watching as always, and I'll see you next time.